So my name is Miguel Vasquez. Uh, I'm a conversational consultant. I mainly focus my work, work mainly focuses on culture, and I live in Monterrey, Mexico. And uh, yeah, as for me, working with organizations is it's a bit of a calling. So I, I love my work. He's one of one of the the main authors uh, in management and organizational development. And he has a quote that says, uh, "Culture is strategy for breakfast." So I don't like to separate uh, culture from leadership because mm. for me it's the same thing. It's okay. like a reinforcement cycle, which is mm -hmm. we have the culture that we have because we have the leaders that we have, but also we have the leadership that we have in the organization because we have the culture that we have. It's like a self-referencing kind of cycle that it's very artificial to separate one of the other. So. Mm -hmm. Leadership is the enactment of the culture. Um, what are uh, some of the ways that organizations then start to see that their culture needs to be changed or something in it needs to change? Most of organizations just through pain, through, through organizational pain. That's that's why that's why they realize they need to do something about it. Nice. Yeah. So one of the examples that I use a lot is like so it's it, uh, culture and uh, it's like a set of beliefs that help us define the identity of the group and uh, mm -hmm. make, that help us uh, support us in in making decisions and define how we perceive talent. Uh, customers, how do we manage mistakes and all that? So mm -hmm. that's that's a short version of the definition that I use. But uh, an example that I use is how we want to be more a uh, more innovative company. That's very like uh, on the lingo right now on uh, all the organizations. But there are beliefs systems that are against experimenting because we don't want to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So it goes precisely in a different direction because when you try to innovate, you're, you're experimenting with new stuff and experimenting means some of those experiments are not going to uh, flourish or uh, right. they're not they going to, work. yeah, they won't work, exactly. Mm -hmm. So if we have the beliefs that experimenting and failing is bad, then you might want to have all, you might have all the certifications and the workshops and the design thinking stuff around that, but it's not going to work. It's not going to take mm -hmm. root on the organization. It's going to be a fad because someone is going to be pushing and pushing and pushing that strategy. But after a while, People get tired, and then you start uh, stop pushing, and then the things face out. The thing fades out into oblivion. So, if you're um, if you're in an organization like this, and you're trying to be more innovative, you want change. Um, how do you how do you change the culture? So, first, I think for me, first is uh, awareness. So, we cannot change what we don't uh, are mm -hmm. able to see. And mm -hmm. basically, I mean, what we are able to observe or, or see is basically bringing bring to awareness the uh, dynamic. Mm -hmm. And uh, another aspect of it is to tie it down to the business or organizational goals. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of uh, a lot of efforts that uh, with organizations. So I'm basically speaking from a business context. Uh, mm -hmm. So that that's that's the, the background that I have. So that's the from the, the point of view of where I'm speaking. So so, so sometimes there are efforts that. That are trying, uh, that people try to implement uh, in terms of change, but if there is no business case for the change, then there's not going to be an incentive for the organization to okay. shift into a different form of culture or, or of work. So awareness is one, business case is a second one. Mm -hmm. So I always separate things in three dimensions: the organizational level, the relationship level, in terms of teams or inter interactions between different areas of the organization, maybe it's HR and operations, sometimes it's business units, between business units and all that, sometimes it's between teams from the same general area, mm -hmm. uh, maybe regions, maybe whatever, it depends on the organization, but it's more of the relationship dynamic, and then it's the individual mm -hmm. level, which is more of the, how do we exercise our leadership, or uh, how aware are we of the power that we have, and how conscious we use, the, our, how conscious are we of the, the way we use power. Like, say you're helping an organization that's having a really tough time with a particular change, they have a strategic project, and so maybe just break it down and try to do it in a little area first, where it would be successful or do you 
Yeah, I mean, I, I just basically it depends on the organization. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're like the two general strategies is like a big bang change or just a strength in a small space of the organization and then grow it up from from there. Depends on what it's it's trying to be changed. Mm -hmm. the, the, depends on, on the actual. Um, so then how? Um, why is it hard to change culture in organizations? You've sort of talked, like you you have given a framework, and I mean, it, it sort of suggests a lot of things, but based uh, on what you see, what are the things that make it most difficult? One of the things that is, it makes it difficult is that it, it has like a, a longer feedback loop. Mm. Uh, so we are, we don't like not having like shorter feedback loops. So if I start doing something, when do I see the effect of those things that are, that yeah. are happening? No? So I need to start to perceive that the, the, the needle is moving. No? So mm -hmm. culture is a thing that, that uh, it's very slow to change. So the, the way that I like to uh, to address that is, for instance, for me, in the beginning, just, just uh, uh, putting it out there is this thing takes a while. But in the meantime, what are some other interventions that, that uh, we need to, uh, a design or, or create that is going to help us like change like faster the one thing that we need to look to, to uh, for to be able to see in the organization that addresses that signals uh, rather the signals that things are moving along so going back to the levels so on the mm -hmm. organizational level it, that things those things start to uh, move on a more slowly pace but then in the relationship level maybe we one of the things that we start to see is that oh, those two areas are interacting better so mm -hmm. that makes it easier for projects to be to come from the customer need to the operational project to the release phase on a faster level. So that means that we're changing. You said something really interesting, which is that culture evolves. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's not, I think you said something like it's, it evolves and it's not built. Um, but can you talk about the evolution of culture? Like how does culture change so, an organization? Yeah, so th there are two ways to talk about the, how, how cultures evolve. So it can evolve in the sense that on the, let's say on, in a way that it's more open and inclusive, meaning we move from less inclusive to more inclusive. And I, I'm using inclusiveness in, in, in a maybe different way that we think about inclusivity. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I mean it is that if culture is not like nurture and, and, and uh, taking care of as an dimension of the organization, people are more acting on a flight or fight uh, kind of like uh, dynamic. Mm -hmm. So they focus mainly on themselves and how do I need to survive? And maybe I focus on the two to three interactions, people that I trust. Mm -hmm. So I'm excluding everybody else because this is the safe space. Right. So the way that culture evolves and, and, and that's why I connect to leadership is how can we help people to start to be more inclusive on the definition of us? When we speak of us, mm -hmm. what does that imply? Us, mm -hmm. it, it's us, the the two to four people that you trust, or is us the whole area of the organization, or maybe it's the whole business unit, or maybe it's the whole organization, that's that's us as mm -hmm. a group. And maybe it, it starts to include other things that are outside of the organization. Does, it, does, does us include the environment? So we start to be more conscious about the how the way we impact the environment. Does us, the definition of us includes our customers or other people, other people from different origins and different stories and different whatever, uh, different uh, ways of being. And the market, when, the market you're in, maybe, the industry yeah, the, you're in, the market industry, and also on, on the dimensions of inclusivity that that uh, we uh, we're more learning more of, let's say, uh, mm -hmm. or that is becoming more uh, important in the business.